Hey everyone, Derby here, back with another Battle Pirates video. This is my How to Build a Zealot final video before the May Raid. I'm going to start out by saying if you just want a Kixai hash code to copy and paste into your shipyard, go ahead and look in the YouTube description, the comment section, wherever you're seeing this, and I'll put one there. But if you want to understand what I'm putting on my ship and why I'm putting it on there, then go ahead and watch this video all the way through to the very end. Starting out here, I'm just in shipyard design mode, so things are going to show up as overcapacity, or I don't have enough of them. And I am using a devout zealot, but you can use whatever zealot regular one or not you want for this one. Starting out with weapons, I'm going to go ahead and put on 7 limited of the Absolver Scatter Guns. It does go over capacity because I don't have enough right now. If you don't have the Absolver Scatter Guns, you can use the Pentinate Scatter Guns, but you will lose damage based off that one. There we go. I'm going to put 7 of those on the ship and then 1 Missile Defense System 3. I would put all of the Absolver Scatter Guns on there, except you can't because your hull will go overweight after you put everything else on here. So that concludes weapons for most of our ships. Let's look at specials next. The first one I'm going to put on is the Sacred Artifact Engine. This is limited, it comes in the Forsaken Mission, but it is pretty expensive. So if you can't use this one, go ahead and put on Penetrative Sync Drive or Corrosive Sync Drive. It doesn't matter which one. If I'm picking, I'm going to pick Penetrative Sync Drive. There we go. That's the one, one special there engine. What's next is going to be specials to boost your damage. I have the limited Twin Fang Feeder. I'm going to put one of these on each different hole. If you don't have this one, you can use the also limited Scatter System 2. That was a tier 8 thing, but the tier 9 one is better. It provides more damage, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put on Twin Fang Feeder. Next up, I have the non-limited. I have the Full Focus Choke. This is going to go on my ships, going to go on all five, and is a really good special. This and Twin Fang Feeder are really what seems to make your 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 whole work and is going to increase your your corrosive damage by a bunch. It's already at plus one thousand and one thousand four hundred and sixty percent. It's gonna keep getting higher. To do that, I'm going to put on another regular special, which is the uh, high volatility cartridges right here. Some other people like to use the limited lower corrosive mount instead. I don't like that one as much because if you look at lower corrosive mount, you are losing combat speed and turn speed for only a small amount of gain in terms of survival and some other stats. So I like to put on here high volatility cartridges. This right here is what we were all pretty much sure about on day one. The last two special slots are going to change slightly from each hole, but I'll go ahead and show you the build I'm using on most of my ships. This last slot here, I'm going to put Guidance Grammar 3, which has the same exact evade as Agility System 4, just a slightly shorter build time, and you don't benefit from any of the other stats on Agility System 4. I'm putting Guidance Grammar 3 on all five of my ships because of the mechanic of the Halo missiles where they shoot at the ship with the highest health, so all the ships are going to be, end up being shot at by the Halo missiles. So Guidance Grammar 3 needs to go on all five of my ships. The last special slot here is going to be Right now, lower corros or lower, it's going to be corrosive battery one. We are expecting, and Kixai has told us we have corrosive battery two in the raid. I have no idea what that's going to look like. I expect it's going to have slightly more corrosive damage, slightly more building damage, slightly more wall damage, maybe not wall damage, and then more turret events. I don't expect it to be anything game changing. But personally, I'm going to actually leave this slot blank on my Zealots that I have built right now, as well as I think I'm missing one or two weapons, maybe one or two armors on each Zealot. But I'm going to leave this blank until the raid starts, because I can use my eight one-day Zealot built tokens to build the lower Corrosive Battery 2, to build Corrosive Battery 2 as soon as that comes out in the raid. So I'm going to leave that slot blank for now, although I'm going to put the Corrosive Battery in the hash code that I post in the YouTube comments and description. Okay, now let's look at armors. What you notice is that in these targets, most of the damage is splash damage from the, uh, from most of the splash damage is from the corrosive armor. So I'm going to go ahead and put two of those on. But like I said, the Halo missiles shoot at all five of your ships, shoots at the one with the highest health. So I'm going to put on two ZM armors right here. If for whatever reason you don't have enough of the ZM armors or the ZCO armors, you don't have enough missile or corrosive armors from the Forsaken mission, I would go ahead and put on some evade armor on your ships. Now, you don't necessarily have to put on the best D5 EV armor. You can either put on that one or the D2 E armors. Advantages of the D5 EV armor is that it adds more evade. It also adds combat speed and turn speed, which could be very, very useful in this target, but it does have a longer repair time and a longer build time. So your fleet dead will take longer to repair than a standard fleet, 
but it might survive longer and do better in the target. So I'd be really interested to know if any higher level player who puts this on is how they do in the raid. You can also, like I said, just put the D2E armor. Advantages for this one is that it's much quicker to build, quicker to repair than the 5 version, but it does have a slightly lower evade. Although, you do save some weight on this one, and on both of these, you lose damage from your fleet, actually, because if you look at the limited armor, it adds 2% corrosive damage, which does add up. So if you don't have the higher level armors, go for the evade armors on your ships. This is the code. If you're building all five ships the exact same, you want to copy and paste this to go for it, put this in, build five of these, four regular ones, one flagship one, you'll do great. What I am going to do differently is I'm going to build two ships slightly differently than everything else. First of all, the flagship zealot is going to look like this and it's going to have one more M armor, so it's going to have three missile armor and one corrosive armor. This is a very small change. I've done it because the Alice carrier, which has penetrative missiles, will priority will tend to target the first and last ship in the fleet most often. So for that reason, I'm putting three missile armors on the flagship, and I will also be putting three missile armors on the fifth ship. The fifth ship is going to have one more change than everything else, though. It's going to be a countermeasure ship. Now you can only put two missile defense system threes on all of your different. All of your you can only put two two countermeasures per ship. You can't put you can only put regular weapons in these six slots here. So you can't build a true countermeasure ship tank. But what you can do is you can build one that just has two missile defense system threes. But I want to boost, boost that in some way. So I have to decide which special I'm going to take off. I don't want to give up damage from Twin Fang Feeder, Folk Focus Choke, High Volatility Cartridges. I, so that leaves me either giving up Guidance Grammar 3 or giving up Corrosive Battery 1 slash 2. Corrosive Battery 1 is weak enough that I am completely comfortable taking this off and putting on Countermeasure Loaders 4 instead. Although you could also use Gala Defense System if you wanted to. I'm putting on Countermeasure Loaders 4 and that's going to, I'm comfortable doing that. So this ship is going to be my anti-ship. And in the targets that we've seen so far, the 101 107 VXP, just one anti-ship was enough. I almost went for two. I almost built the flag looking exactly like this one too. Keep in mind there are three missile armors right here and one corrosive armor. But I almost built the flag like this one too, but after some conversations, I decided that I was probably going to be okay with only having one countermeasure specific ship, and I didn't want to give up the extra damage from corrosive battery on all of my ships. But you can you, you can see the damage right here is 7 million right now without corrosive battery, but even if I put back corrosive battery one right here, the damage goes all the way back up to 9.2 million. So you do lose a lot of damage by giving up corrosive battery, but when you do the math, it's only about 10% and that's 17%, maybe only on one ship. So my fifth ship is going to be built like this. Some other people are giving up Guidance Scrammer 3 on that one instead of instead of giving up uh, Corrosive Battery, but I think that it's best to have it made on all five ships. So there we go, that's my build that I'm using on all five ships, and let's talk about crews for a second. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trying to save up as many crews as possible before the raid. Obviously, if you have things such as the demo squads or grease monkeys, you can see I have one of those left. Those are great. Other crews that will work fairly well in these targets are the Molotov Maidens, the regular ones, not the two-star ones, although they're just a longer duration, because this boosts splash and spread, which is very useful and will probably be very useful on your zealots with the scatter guns with the immense amount of damage and splash. Molotov Maidens is a good one. Steelhead's crew is not a good one because it doesn't boost corrosive defense, it only boosts missile defense. So I'd steer away from that one and look for things more like sea serpents. Because sea serpents, if I have any crews left here, I have to roll more, I have two of them. They give you some turn speed, which is nice and helps you helps you drive around the target better. But it gives you, importantly, 24% evade, and increasing evade is going to be really, really helpful in these targets. So there's the build I'm using, and let me talk about upgrades for a second. I'll see if I can pull up my regular ships right here and show you what I have built. They're all across different categories, so let's move them all together. What I'm going to be doing is the Zealot flagship is actually currently upgrading in my shipyard, and that's currently going to U2. The rest of my ships are at U1. 
what I'm going to be doing before the raid is getting the fifth ship right here. It's not fully built yet. The fifth ship right here is going to go up to U2, and the flagship is going up to U2. This is because the U2 upgrade on both of them gives extra evade, and like I said, the Atlas carrier with penetrative missiles tends to target the first and last ship in the fleet. If you can get these up to U3 also, great, that's fantastic, your ship will survive longer. But prioritize the first, and the first one, and the last one up to U2, maybe even U3, probably before you upgrade anything else. Overall, I hope to get the whole fleet up to U2, first and third, first and fifth are at U3, and if the X1 upgrades turn out to be really good, then I'll go ahead and try and do that too. But for me, the first month before the raid and what I've done right now is building the fleet, maybe a couple minor upgrades from tokens that we've gotten in the TLC. The second month, my fleet's fully built. I don't have anything else to spend my shipyard time on, so therefore, I'm going to start upgrading the fleet. I'm not going to have a full X1 fleet. I'm not going to have a full U3 fleet even before the first raid. I will be having that fleet, hopefully U3, maybe a couple still at U2, maybe one or two up to X1 before the second raid in the cycle, which will be the last one in the cycle. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions on anything, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you think I'm wrong and you're doing something differently than I am, definitely let me know that too. Most people don't like giving up as much uh, damage from the corrosive battery as I do, even moving it off one ship. And most people aren't even running Guidance Scrammer 3 in all five ships. But I think I have a pretty good idea on how to build these targets. But if you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to respond as quickly as I can to you. Anyway, this is Derpy, signing off, helping you be a better pirate.